Now to complete the ground floor, we can add the furniture. The Symbols ribbon contains many different categories. We will just add some from the Furniture section, although all of the other categories work in exactly the same way. You will see that the Flyout menu is now separated into subcategories. Use the slider to identify the required symbol. We want this table and chairs. This symbol, like many others, has definable parameters, allowing you to set the required sizes. Click into place and set the rotation, either by snapping to a point or typing in the angle. Let's add a set of drawers. Same procedure, select, place and rotate. Let's insert that same symbol again. Pressing return or enter repeats the last command, however the symbols selected from these categories in the ribbon use the standard insert symbol command and pre-select the symbol for you. So if you press return or enter, the insert symbol command is repeated and displays the insert symbol dialog box. Here, symbols contained in the drawing are displayed and you can select the required symbol from the list. In some instances, because of the symbol insertion point, you may not be able to snap the symbol into place first time. Don't worry, just drop it down nearby and set the correct orientation. Select it and then use the Move command to adjust the position. You will notice that selecting the same symbol category again automatically scrolls to the previous point in the list, in this case the bedroom section. Let's pick this table and change one of the sizes. The symbol is adjusted and we can now place it as needed. Again remember you can use the shift key to lock the rotation to 45 degree steps or simply type in the required angle. We know that you now get the idea with this as well, so to save time, here is the plan with all of the symbols in place. OK, let's now create the first floor plan. Because the external walls and many of the internal walls are the same as on the ground floor, we can copy it and then adjust it to suit. Before we do this, we're going to use the Layers function to turn off some of the items we do not need on the first floor. Let's turn off the layers containing our ground floor symbols. To do this, we just untick the box in the relevant column. Now we're ready to copy the ground floor plan. For this we use the standard copy command. First select the items to copy, now define a reference point. We'll move to the right and click it into place. Even though we have used the standard copy command, the system has detected that we're copying walls, doors and windows. We don't want to copy any doors, so we can untick these. Now you can see the copy is completed and all of the doors have been removed and the openings automatically repaired. Before we go any further, let's switch the furniture layers back on. Now let's remove some internal walls that are not required. Simply select and delete. And we can use the refresh button to update the display to show the repaired walls and intersections. Now let's click on the text and move it. We can adjust the arrow using the entity handles. If we double click on the text, we can edit it to say down. OK, now we need to add some stud walls to this floor. The first one is 2300 down from this point. Remember, hover over the point until the snap turns red, press R, then the down arrow and type in 2300. Press F7 for snap mode and locate the perpendicular point on the opposite wall. Same again for the next wall except we need a right justification. 
This one is 300 down from the window opening. Press F7 for snap mode and locate the perpendicular point on the opposite wall. Now to add the first floor doors. Let's zoom into this area which will contain all of the first floor doors. Just as on the ground floor, select the required door, set the sizes and justification, slide along the wall to the desired position, remembering you have the option to type in the distance of the controlling dimension rather than using the dynamic dimensions. We know that you get the idea, so to save time, here is the plan with all of the doors in place. We've already covered inserting furniture on the ground floor, so let's jump ahead a bit and show all of the first floor furniture in place. All of the symbols shown here are in the standard Drafted Architectural Library, as well as hundreds more in 15 different categories. Our first floor drawing is a little too close to the ground floor plan, so let's just move that over a little before we add the roof. We can use the standard move command to do this. Now select the roof command to add a gable roof to the main body of the first floor plan. We will accept the default settings and pick a wall that the roof will be based on, not one of the gable ends. Now two points to define the width. The first one is this corner. The second is here, in line with the wall face highlighted. As there is no point to snap to, we can use the XY point snap feature. Position on this end point and press Y to grab the Y coordinate of this point. As earlier, you can see a dotted line showing that we are locked to this position. Now pick a point on the outside face of the left vertical wall. Finally, pick a point at the other end of the plan to define the length, and the roof lines are drawn. Next, pick the roof command again and select a hipped type. Again, we pick the roof line and two points to define the width. This time, instead of a point to define the length, we are going to intersect with the existing roof. Now look at the command prompt. There's an option to T into another roof. Simply press T to tell the system we want to do this and click on the roof line to intersect with. Easy. Repeat the process for the final roof. Roof line. Two points for the width. T to intersect and click on the roof line to intersect with. Done. Now to finish our drawing we will create a front elevation of our house. We have two floor plans so we create two elevation views and stack them. The command prompt is asking on which wall will the elevation be based. This is the wall we want to look at. Now we move the cursor down to define the viewing direction to the wall. Next, the depth of view. Typically, this would be past the roof ridge line so that this is correctly represented in the elevation. Next, we need to define the left and right extent. In this case, two points past the outside edges to the left and right of the plan. Now for the reference point. Let's zoom in a bit and pick the outside corner point. Let's move over this corner first and when the snap point turns red, move up, invoking the IntelliSnap feature. Now simply click the ground floor elevation into place, in line with the left edge of the plan. OK, let's select Zoom Full Page and repeat the elevation command for the first floor. Now the reference point, and we need to zoom right in here to make sure we select the bottom left corner rather than one of the roof lines. Now attach the first floor elevation to the ground floor elevation and then we can remove any unwanted lines, in this case the floor lines on the first floor elevation. Let's zoom out to see the completely